Okay, now we're good. Hi. Um, I am Kathleen Danielson, and I'm going to talk about mappers in MeetSpace or how to build and cultivate online, uh, in person local communities. So, who am I and why am I at all qualified to give this talk? Um, I am creator and co organizer of GODC, which is a uh, local meetup group in Washington, D.C. I am a web development project manager, which actually isn't relevant, but that's part of who I am. Um, I am an online community manager, both for work and just for funsies. Um, I'm also a recovering social media nerd. I try not to talk about that a lot, but um, my point being, community is my jam. Um, I not infrequently tell people that my main life skill is getting people into the same room to drink beer and do nerdy things. Um, Nerdy is somewhat relative, but it's a pretty good descriptor for all of my hobbies, so I'm just going to run with it. Um, so I'm going to tell you a quick story about Where Camp DC, which was an event that happened in June 2011. It was an unconference around uh, geospatial technologies and tools. I had nothing to do with planning it. Um, I am interested in geo stuff. I had minored in geography, then I graduated, didn't do anything with maps after that. Heard about Wear Camp, decided to go. It was awesome. Um, so Bonnie, I think, is here. She was one of the organizers. Kelso is probably not in this room. He's here, one of the organizers. Um, the event was great. And afterwards, I thought, you know, this is a really neat community. I wonder if these people spend time t together. I wonder if they hang out regularly. It turns out they didn't. Um, so I got, uh, I found the group of organizers, I sent a note to them and said, hey guys, you know, thanks for putting on this event, it was great. Do you think that there'd be interest in a, in a regular meetup? And so they said, yeah, you know, I think that sounds good. Bonnie offered to help me do it. And so from there, uh, we created GODC. Uh, GODC is a monthly meetup in Washington, D.C. where we get together at a bar and, uh, like I said, drink beer and talk about nerdy things, in this case, maps. GUDC is not OpenStreetMap specific, um, but there is a large amount of overlap, and I'm actually going to talk about that um, in a little bit. This picture, which is a little dark, um, is just from earlier this year. We had a meetup on satellite imagery and mapping. Um, we average about uh, 100 people, give or take 20, will show up at our meetups uh, every month. So why bother? What is, um, why is local community important? Uh, Martin kind of had a really great segue into this, um, so I'll kind of defer to the second half of his talk. But some of my points are that this is a really diverse community. People get involved in OpenStreetMap for a lot of reasons. Um, it's really great to kind of bring in those perspectives and keep your own ideas about OpenStreetMap well-rounded. Um, also, mapping is a pretty solitary task. You can just do it on your own without interacting with anyone, as we've seen through a lot of the statistics um, in these earlier sessions. Um, but that means it's easier to kind of go down rabbit holes and forget about the big picture and forget that this is a community of thousands and thousands of mappers. Um, and it really can only help the project to establish more in-person hubs. And again, for that point, I will refer you back to uh, Martin's uh, talk. Also kind of a nerdy bunch, and just looks like maybe we could use a little fresh air. Um, the screen grab is just from Wii Sports. It's my, one of my favorite things that every now and then it kind of is like, you look like you maybe should just go outside. Maybe just, just put the video games down and go outside. But anyway, so, you know, maybe step out from behind your computer, go outside, see, you know, other people. So um, one of my main points here is that this is not hard. Um, I promise it's not hard. It, sounds hard or looks hard or people think it is, it's not. 90% of what I do is I send an email or I tweet or I pick up the phone and text someone. It's shockingly simple. And then also, if you don't get pickup right away, that, that's okay. You don't need to have this like massive group instantly that, you know, you'll, you'll need to rethink your approach. You'll want to re reach out for suggestions, and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But getting back to... Um, how easy this is. I uh, went to Europe in November, just on vacation, and I realized, you know, I know that OpenStreetMap is even more, uh, even more 
uh, popular there. And so I wanted, I thought it would be neat to meet uh, with folks there. So all I did was I emailed the different talk lists um, and said, hey, you know, I'm going to be visiting your, this city on these days. Are there any meetups planned or would anybody like to meet up? And so, you know, I got a great response. And so in Amsterdam, I got geo drinks with some folks here uh, who are actually friends of Martin's. Um, in Belgium, I met up with two folks, including one who's over there. Hi, Ben. Um, <laughs> And uh, in Paris, I met up with OpenStreetMap folks and learned about kind of OSM France, which uh, was just really interesting. It was really great to get this whole international perspective that I just didn't know anything about before. Um, in preparing for this talk, I checked in with a bunch of uh, local community organizers for OpenStreetMap around the US and got a couple, um, some tidbits of advice for them. And a lot of what they had to say was be patient. Um, be patient kind of in all different respects. Um, be patient with the new people in your group. They may not know as much as you do, but you were new to the project once as well. And then also, kind of most obviously, be patient with building up this community. Um, it's, not, it's not going to be massive overnight, and that's okay. So, all right, with all that said, this is a talk that's pretty practical. These are, we're kind of talking about how do you go, in, go back home to your town, your city, and build these communities. So. To do that, you're going to need to find other mappers. You're going to need to tell people about it. You need to spread the word. You have to do something once you get together. So you need programming. And you need to find ways to keep it going. Um, so you may or may not know that there are already actually local communities in all of these places. Um, they are of uh, varying sizes. They're of varying um, interest levels. They, um, you know, some are older, newer, some there are some local groups that um, have kind of sunsetted and come back. Um, and these also aren't all exclusively open street map focused. And um, we're going to talk about that at the end as well. But say there's not a group in your city or you don't like them, but that's a different issue. Um, let's not say that. Uh, you need to find people in your area. Uh, if you saw uh, Mikkel's uh, talk yesterday, he talked a lot about this, and so I'll refer you to him. He had a really good descriptions of how to kind of find local mappers. But basically, one, some of the places I would recommend starting would be Ito's uh, OSM mapper, um, Pascal's OSM contributors map, and, uh, and also actually the Talk US mailing list. Um, but do try the others first, because that is the first thing they will tell you. Um, but anyway, but yeah. So Check out Mikkel's uh, talk. So great, you found some people, you think you know, there are people who are interested, but you still want to spread the word. Um, going to use a couple of standard tools, email. Um, email is always the best way to get people's um, attention, always. Uh, Google Groups are great. They are probably the easiest tool, online tool for a group. Um, they're free, they are um, easy. Other, your, users, your users do not have to have Google uh, Gmail addresses um, to be part of the groups. Um, Twitter, it may or may not be uh, your jam, but it's uh, it can be a really good uh, avenue for getting the word out, learning more about your um, kind of your areas, tech or geospace. Um, Facebook, which I probably I would not have added to this list. I would not have added Facebook to this list about six months ago because I think that Facebook groups are dumb and I don't like the way they work. However, or at that time I thought that they were dumb and didn't like the way they work. However, I have since started homebrewing because I'm really cool and uh, joined the DC Homebrew Club Facebook group, which is the most active Facebook group I've ever seen. These people use it, um, post on it like six times a day. If you post something, you'll get half a dozen responses. So my point with that is this may not be the avenue for your group, but there are different tools out there that are great for communication. And what works for one group may not work for another. And what doesn't work for that group may be great for you. So don't, um, don't discount anything. And then the final tool for spreading the word is meetup.com. I am a huge advocate for using meetup. I think it is an excellent tool. It is not free, which is its big drawback. It's um, $45 a quarter. So if it's just you doing that, that can be kind of a pain. Um, but it is a great way to reach new folks. That's what I use for GODC, and I can't tell you how many times I've 
interacted with somebody who's their first time, I'll ask them, oh, how'd, how'd you hear about the group? And they'll tell me Meetup. It, Meetup's very good at uh, letting you know kind of what other groups are in the area that you might be interested in. It's got all the tools that you need to, um, to schedule events, to communicate with attendees, to um, provide your attendees all the, to provide your group members kind of with all the resources they need. And it's all kind of just packaged into one tool. I really, really, really recommend it. This is just the GODC, uh, part of the GODC Meetup page. Um, it's, uh, there, I know that some people aren't huge fans of it because it's, you know, it's not, a, it's not an open source tool, it, you, know, you have to pay for it. And I really do get that, um, but it's just, it's great at what it does. Um, and so you can build, you can, there's no reason you can't build your own website, and you can build your own website that has some of these features, but again, this is Meetup's job is to make Meetup suffer, and they do it really well. So that's my Meetup rant. Anyway, so you have found people who are interested. You've gotten the word out. Now what? You probably shouldn't just sit around a table and stare at each other for two hours, although if you want to, you can do that. Um, let me know how it works. Um, so some of the things that you will, that are common in Meetup, in uh, OpenStreetMap or Geo Meetups are, um, some different activities, so social meetups um, or mappy hours because we like maps and we like puns. Um, also mapping parties, and those can be uh, in the field or armchair, um, often a combination of the two. Um, if you're not familiar with mapping parties, that's where you kind of go out into the sunlight and um, use you know, GPS devices or uh, you know, your phones or anything and get um, you know, collect data on the ground, and then go back, load it into OpenStreetMap, and, um, you know, add it into the map. Um, you can be doing oh, informal presentations, lightning talks, that kind of thing. Uh, also, workshops. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the people who are more experienced in your community to kind of share their knowledge with the less experienced folks. Um, so, you know, have somebody run a workshop on JOSM or on, you know, how to add their own uh, imagery into their editor of choice uh, so that they can be using that. Um, so great, you've got, you know, this sort of little meetup going on, but what you think that your community needs may not be what they need. Um, you can think that they need training all the time, but maybe they just want to get out and map, and so ask. The first GODC meetup we had, we didn't have anything planned, all we did was you know, we got a bunch of people together and said, great, we want to have these meetups, but what do you want out of them? And so, you know, we heard back that it was, you know, people wanted the informal setting. People wanted the, um, people wanted to, to kind of be hearing from each other. And you'll, you'll need to keep trying new things. Um, tweak it, try, um, try something. If it doesn't work, try something different the next month or the next week or whenever. Um, and do reassess your community's needs. What your community needed two years ago might not be the same as what they need today. Uh, you, if you had a bunch of com beginners when you started, you don't need to keep giving them um, like an intro to JOSM workshops, but you maybe have gained a lot of newcomers, and so they do need that, and you need to meet your community where they're at. Um, so, okay, you've got this great little community, but um, one of the biggest issues is keeping it going. Um, there are a couple different ways that you can ensure that, and so those are going to be things like connecting with other groups um, that have nothing to do with OpenStreetMap, but your interests uh, may or may not intersect. So this could be an environmental group, uh, conservation type groups, um, tech groups, others. There are, um, you know, in DC recently, uh, Mikhail gave a, a class at a at a local free school and you know taught people how to like take traces and um, and add things in the into the map and that's an entirely new um, audience for OpenStreetMap. Um, don't try this alone. If at all possible, have help. Make sure you have co-organizers. And then um, seriously, don't forget to reassess your community's needs. Don't assume that what somebody told you a year ago about what they really want is still accurate. Just, you know, keep an eye on it. Um, probably one of the biggest issues when it comes to community management, particularly really in online or in person, is burnout. It, it, it can be exhausting. Um, so like I said, try to have at least one other co one uh, co-organizer. It's a huge relief to not be the only one that a community is depending on um, to be able to pass something off to, you know, split the balance. Um, make sure you've got help. It will, 
the community will last longer and be more successful. Don't be afraid to ask for help or resources from your community. You are doing this for free and usually your community understands that and they appreciate that. And so if you need help organizing something or finding a space or if you need everybody to pitch in five bucks, let them know. If you, if you don't get a good response, you don't, but don't be afraid to ask them. Um, be honest with yourself about what you can realistically support. Um, can you, does it make sense to meet up once a week? Maybe, if you've got a really big, really active group, it might. Um, if you don't have time for that and you don't think your group has interest for that, don't do that. And don't, um, don't hold events that are kind of have require this massive effort if you don't kind of have the support to back that up. Um, and then finally, make sure it's fun for you. Um, take a break if you need it. That's an okay thing to do. Um, I've seen a lot of meetup groups where you know, someone's been organizing it for years and you know, they say, look, this is great. I really care about this group. I need to step back for a couple months. Uh, we will start up again in the fall. Um, and that's an okay thing too, because again, you're, nobody's paying you to do this. You need to kind of look out for you and nobody's gonna be advocating for you but you. Um, so know that it's okay to step back. Um, it's okay to ask for help. You don't kind of have to be the knight in shining armor doing it all um, on your own. So I had a couple other thoughts um, that I just wanted to, to go over. And so one of them was the idea of an OpenStreetMap exclusive community or not. Um, so GODC, like I said, is not, that's not an OpenStreetMap exclusive community. All we, we do, um, lightning talks, presentations, it's a social meetup. We don't go do mapping parties. There is a uh, OpenStreetMap group in DC. Um, I don't organize it, but you know I'm involved with them. I, I know them. Um, some of the biggest groups that I talked to um, in getting ready for this were um, some of the most active local OpenStreetMap groups in the US are not OpenStreetMap exclusive. They are um, they're kind of spinoffs or part of a larger group. Um, and that's okay, this, is, this can be, on the one side, this can be an easier way to get started, particularly if your area does not already have an active, uh, an especially active geo community, if you think that there would be interest, it may be easier just to start with, um, kind of, excuse me, uh, with geo in general. Um, and then as that picks up and there's interest, uh, spin off into a more, uh, a more OpenStreetMap exclusive group. Really, it's very much a case by case basis. I don't have any, um, kind of formula for how to make this work. I just have you know, my own experiences and uh, recommendations. And then finally, what I wanted to mention was that um, I've been spending a while thinking about how uh, OpenStreetMap US and local communities can interact. Um, right now, there is no formal, formal relationship between them. Um, there are no, no local communities are like officially OSM sanctioned. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know whether that's good or not. I think, um, I think putting up unnecessary barriers is not a good idea. Um, but I think there is also validity in um, kind of having that support from on high. Um, and to that end, what can OpenStreetMap US be doing to support the local groups? Um, Right now, there's not, um, I think in the past there's been, there have been sort of little efforts here and there, um, but right now there's nothing kind of specifically going out to them. Um, one thing though is uh, there are uh, like an idea of national and local programming. So recently we started having um, edit-a-thons. I think our first one was in January and we decided to make that a uh, quarterly event. So we had another one in April and we'll have one soon. Um, the, these are different ideas for kind of how do you get local communities engaged, and then how do you get those local communities engaged back with the national community? Um, so that's something I've been thinking about a lot. I'd love to hear people's thoughts um, and different opinions on that. Um, but that's actually what I've got. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, 
Um, so the question was kind of about keeping community running. Is it um, about being consistent? Is it about having a clear task? Um, I think this is something that requires trial and error, and it's going to work differently for different communities. And um, and it's also probably going to be a combination of the two, and you know, a handful of other things. Um, there's definitely no hard and fast uh, rules for how to make this work. Um, and I think as people are successful in different areas, giving like sending that success back to um, to kind of the community at large is going to help everybody. Um, so my so my personal group is GODC, which which is not actually OpenStreetMap specific. Um, so no, we don't because we are uh, pretty pretty much just a professional so, uh, like networking social group. Um, Mapping DC, which I don't organize, um, they don't either. But they but they will organize things like um, mapping parties where they go out and they're like, okay, let's let's map this area. Alyssa. Um, this is, so this is definitely more of a qualitative talk. Um, I think you measure success by our people showing up. Well, I think it's really, honestly, longevity is probably, is, would be my, um, would my, be my biggest metric of success. Um, because if a community is not successful, people are going to stop showing up and not be interested in it. I don't think that, um, attendance is the right metric, um, because different areas just have different populations and, um, and I don't think it's, and I don't think that's and I don't think that's necessarily an indicator of um, whether something's working out or not. So I would say maybe longevity, but um, a lot of it's kind of like the sum of, you know, is it doing this, this, and this well? You know, it does this well, but this not. So the question is about kind of the financial burden and um, sponsorships to be sponsored or not. Um, this again is a case by case basis. So for GODC in particular, we don't have sponsors, and that was a conscious choice. Um, the bar that we meet at, um, they're good to us. They don't. We don't have to. You know, we're fortunate. We don't have to pay for the space. They just let us use it because we bring them a lot of business. Um, not having sponsors allows us to um, completely manage the the programming, so we don't have to, you know, reserve space for a sponsor to kind of pitch their product, um, which we like. Uh, but that's, but again, that's that's actually sort of a different group than necessary than what we're necessarily talking about here. I think if. Um, you know, there, if there are companies in the area that have a vested interest in OpenStreetMap in the tech community or, you know, elsewhere, that can be, um, you know, sponsorship can go a long way. The other thing is that this can be a very low, um, a low budget operation. So GODC doesn't have any sponsors, but we're like a zero budget group. Yeah, no, I, I definitely don't mean to suggest that sponsorship is evil. Um, part of it is that for GODC, we just, we don't, like, we don't provide a round of drinks or anything, and, um, and so that's part of it. If, 
and and because it's at a bar that is easier if we were meeting in an office um you, we'd want to provide like snacks pizza whatever um and at that point would need sponsorship to do that but because we're at a bar there's food right there people can buy it it's great um but no i mean i definitely don't mean yeah don't mean to suggest that sponsorship can't be really successful and also you're right that meetup does have meetup.com does have um sponsorship tools built in which um, can be really useful if you're looking for that Alyssa. Yeah, I mean, I think if there's interest in that, I think if there's interest in that, that's enough, That's kind of a another one of 90% of the work is sending the email. Um, so I think, I mean, I think that needs to be cultivated on a group-to-group -group basis. I don't think that's something that'll be cultivated from the top down. Um, I think because also, like, I, it's not relevant to me what's happening in Seattle. But it might be relevant, what's happening in New York, because that's closer, maybe I'm working there. Um, so it's kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. But I do think that, like, I mean, you also end up, like, different communities have different relationships with other communities. So the DC community uh, has pretty close ties with Tampa Bay, because the Spatial Networks folks come up um, frequently, and we see them a lot. So that's, they're just, like, they're our friends. And so, you know, that's an organic, that's not any kind of, like, there was a strategic decision. Um, but so we do tend to know what's going on in, in Tampa Bay, and they tend to know what's going on in DC. Um, one last question. Um, I think that what I found most successful is to just ensure that you're not um, you're not only talking to one audience um, there and what makes it easier is that I'm not super technical so I would get bored if all of our talks were super technical um, but do have a breadth of them because I mean I would say like the like the group that comes out is like probably 50 percent like almost 50 percent developer highly technical so you know, we, we, what we do is we have, we'll have like three lightning talks. And so we'll usually try to have them like cover a breadth of um, understanding levels and, um, and that. But I think we also, I mean, again, because ours is not OSM specific, but we, we, um, what we found was helpful was using a theme. So we've had the three lightning talks and we'd center them around the theme. Um, and that tended to, people would get more excited about that than just like three random talks that weren't about anything in particular. So um, once we once we kind of figured that out, that people are interested in the theme, then we started um, kind of like cultivating our lineup around different topics. So um, like on Wednesday, uh, Stephen Johnson, who was just presenting over there, uh, he actually put together for us a lineup of people to talk about census. Um, and you know, in the past we've had uh, you know a lineup of talks about satellite imagery, um, and so people that that tends to get people more excited than just, we're going to talk about geo things, period. We line up our schedules as Bonnie and I are able. <laughs> so yeah. it's just when Bonnie and I are less busy, we line up farther out in advance. When we are more busy, we line up really late. <laughs> OK, um, I think it's lunchtime, guys. I'm really hungry. <laughs> Thank you.